Hey there. In this video, I want to talk just a little bit about the difference between subtasks and checklist items in TickTick. -tick. I think a lot of times those concepts are a little bit confusing because, to be honest, subtasks and checklist items are almost the same thing. So when should we use subtasks and when should we use checklist items? That's what I want to talk about in this video. So let's jump into TickTick -tick and take a look. All right, so I'm actually going to start with checklists. And the reason why is because if you know the history of TickTick, -tick, checklists actually existed before subtasks. Uh, subtasks came along uh, probably several years ago now, but for a while we only had checklists in TickTick -tick, and there was no official subtasks. Um, so to create a checklist, all you do is you go to a task. So I'm gonna pick train the cat to use the remote control. And if you see this, like three lines under the priority flag, if I hover over that, it says checklist. And so if you click that, that will create your checklist for this task. So I'm gonna go ahead and click it. All right. So now I've added a checklist item and that's how easy it is. So if I hit enter, I can add an additional checklist item. So find remote control, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and add a couple more checklist items. So that's it. It's simple to add a checklist item. And a couple things to note. Over here on the main tasks pane, you can see that my task now has a different checkbox icon. And that indicates that we're using a checklist. So if you see that icon, you'll know that this task has a couple different checklist items within it. And you'll have to click on that task in order to see those checklist items. If you want to rearrange your checklist items, simply grab the handle over on the left side and you can move tasks up and down however you see. So that's pretty simple. I'm going to put these back in the right order because they were in kind of a, a decent order. All right, and last thing is you can actually put a due date on your checklist items. So find remote control. Let's say I want to do that today. I can come up here. I can hit this alarm clock icon and it brings up the date picker. So I can just choose today, and now that is due today. One thing that you might have noticed is up on my today view, that didn't change. So it's still only showing the one task uh, that it previously showed. So let's go up to the today view now and take a look. So it doesn't have my checklist item that I just marked as due today, but did you know that you can show checklist items uh, in your smart list? So if you come up here to the three dots, there's an option here, show check item. So if you're not seeing your check items, go up there to the three dots, click show check items. Now you can see that my check item, find remote control, comes into my today view. So that's pretty cool. Now, real quick, if you didn't wanna see your checklist items in the smart list, uh, you could come back up here to the three dots and click hide check item, and that would take it away. But I wanna see my checklist items in the today view. And so what happens when I click on find remote control? Because it's not really a task, right? It's just a checklist item within a task. So when I click on it, it brings me to the, to the task, the big task of train the cat to use the remote control. All right, so that's checklist items. Now, in my opinion, checklist items should be used in most scenarios. In most cases, you have a main task and maybe you have a handful of steps that you need to do as part of that task. Just list those as checklist items. It makes it super simple, right? There's not much to them. You just come in here, add all your checklist items. And it doesn't overcomplicate things, right? I mean, you're not creating a bunch of tasks. You're only keeping that one main task and then adding, hey, these are the steps that are part of that task. And you can add a due date to the checklist item and they'll show up on your smart list. And most of the time, that's all you need, right? Like, I wouldn't need a whole separate task for find the remote control. That can just be a checklist item. And I think that's probably true for most things. But on the occasion where you need a whole separate task, that's where you would use subtasks. So why would you need a whole separate task for a step? Well, if you want to add its own priority, that would be one case. If you want to add its own description, if you want to add its own attachments, uh, if you want to add your own comments, 
None of that's possible with checklist items. Really, the only additional functionality with checklist items is the due date. So if you need something beyond due date, that's when you would go to subtasks. All right, so let's jump back into TickTick -tick and I will show you how to add subtasks. So I'm gonna go over to tasks and let's go to polish the silverware with a toothbrush. Now, there are a couple ways to add subtasks. Uh, the easiest way, I think, is to hold the shift key and then press enter. So if I come over here to the end of the task description, hold down shift, press enter, that creates a subtask. And I could add my subtask in here. And you can see over on the right side, it's actually creating a new task over there. But I'm gonna go ahead and delete this subtask because I wanna show you an additional way to create subtasks. So if I delete that, kind of starting again from scratch, I'm going to click the main task now. So polish the silverware with a toothbrush. If you remember for checklists, we came up here to the checklist icon. For subtasks, you'll go down here to the three dots and up at the very top of the menu is add subtask. All right, and this creates a subtask section. So let me just add a couple subtasks in here. All right, so I added a couple subtasks. You can see they show up over here within the task. They also show up over here on the main tasks pane under the main task. And I can collapse this, clicking this little arrow to the left side, or expand it. Uh, you'll also notice that over here, when I hover over these, I can move these around just like I did the subtasks, grabbing the handle and so forth. The other thing you'll notice is there's no clock over here to set a due date, but rather there's an arrow that shows up. And so if you click this arrow, this will actually take you to the find a toothbrush task. Now this is a whole separate task, even though it's under polish the silverware with a toothbrush, it's its own task and I can set its priority. So maybe this priority is high. And you'll notice over here that find a toothbrush, the priority is high, but polish the silverware um, with a toothbrush has no priority. So it's a separate task. Um, I can add description here. And again, this is separate from the description on the main task. So if I come up here to polish the silver with a toothbrush, it doesn't have any of that description. That's strictly on my find a toothbrush subtask. I can even add comments to this, to this task. That belongs to this task as well. I could upload attachments if I had one. I could add tags. Um, I can do anything that you would normally do with any other task, you can do with a subtask. All right, and let's just put a due date on here of today so we can see how this looks in the today view. All right, and we see our number of tasks increased to three on the today view. Let's jump over there. All right, so just a reminder, uh, this find a toothbrush is our subtask and it looks just like any other task really. The only way that we would know that this is a subtask is if we click on it, you'll see above the task name over here on the right side is the main task. So polish the silverware with the toothbrush is the main task. It's in a lighter gray and so we can see that and we could click on this and it would take us to that main task. So that's a little bit different than the find remote control, which is a checklist item where it has the icon of checklist item. And we know that this isn't really a task. This is just a checklist item. And when we click on find remote control, it's going to take us right to that main task. All right. So there's one other thing that I want to point out on checklist items. Let's say I found a remote control. I'm going to go ahead and mark this one as complete. Now, if you notice over here on the right side, there's a little bar a little gray bar that fills in. It filled in about 25% of the way across the screen. And so this is called the status 20%. Interesting. So I thought this would be 25% because I have four checklist items. So 25% a piece, right? Anyways, before I move on, uh, that, uh, that little gray bar up there is a progress bar. So it just kind of keeps track of how much progress you've made on this main task. So we're 20% done with train the cat to use the remote control. Now, my guess is it's also going to include that main task as 
part of that percentage. So let's go ahead and find out. I'm going to go ahead and check some of these other items off. That takes us up to 40. Oh, so this doesn't even show you the percent that you have completed. It just shows you where your mouse is. <laughs> okay, you learn something new every day. I'm gonna go back and uncheck my checklist items to just one. So I thought this would be 25%. And if I put my mouse right at the end, okay, it is 25%. So it is what I thought. I wish if you hovered anywhere on the bar, it said 25% because it's a little bit confusing, right? Like if I come up here and just say, well, how much percent done am I? Oh, I'm 10%. That's not right. Anyways, something I didn't realize about Tick Tick. But just pointing out that the checklist items do have a progress bar indicating how much percent complete the main task is. If you go check a subtask, for example, if we check find a toothbrush, um, I can't even go to the main task here. I have to go back to tasks and come to polish the silverware with the toothbrush, which was the main task. Uh, there is no progress bar here, right? So just a slight difference between checklists and subtasks. Let me know in the comments, do you prefer the simple checklist approach or do you like the more robust subtask approach? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Well, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.